As it should be a beautiful Sunday afternoon in the Mile High City. As we say goodbye to the 2023 season, the Rockies and Twins. The Twins have won the first two ball games of this series. They're preparing themselves for the postseason and the Rockies get ready to uh, head to vacation and get ready for the 2024 campaign. We want to improve dramatically from what has been a tough year. Here's the Southwest batting order for Minnesota. Edward Julien's going to lead it off. And you know the lineup that we're looking at is a little different than the lineup that uh, we have on our scorecard. But says Willie Castro, Alex Kirilov, Max Kepler, Ryan Jeffers, Matt Walner, Donovan Solano, Trevor Larnick, Kyle Farmer. You know what? We're going to have to wait because Minnesota completely changed their lineup this morning. And the lineup that we have is different. We'll see who comes up yeah. when, right? It's, it's almost like spring training. Well, we'll yeah. go ahead and figure out the first hitter of the game. For Brent Suter, 4-3 and three on the year with a 342 ERA. Second game started, 57th game overall. And it was funny this morning because Brent went out and did his normal work around 11 o'clock this morning and then came by, shook all our hands. And we said, hey, we, we can't talk to you. You're a starting pitcher. He goes, ah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Well, Donovan Solano <laughs> is leading off. I mean, it's crazy. Just to, so here, uh, we'll pull you inside the booth really quick. Drew's Drew's book is completely destroyed. So broken. so is Huey's, by the <laughs> way. Right, dude. So they they make these they make these lineups lineup cards that they they offer broadcasters. It's just a sheet of paper. But they have it online also earlier. Yeah. So and and the lineup that I have is correct. How do you know? Because I'm looking at it. <laughs> You don't know until the guy comes out. Like the one we well, have, I just had, had to use Jordan some wide out. It's right here. In the See, it's right two here. hole. I like, I like technology. Hat, by the way, bud. Yep. Gauchos. I'm rocking the gaucho yeah, hat I today because it's Skip Schumacher and the fighting fish. That's right. I I said he's my National League Manager of the Year. Hey, Brett Suter, one out. Well, Brent Suter was not scheduled to start today. Brent will be the opener. Chase Anderson was scheduled to start, but a uh, little bit of a finger issue. So, unfortunately, Chase, who really wanted uh, badly to pitch on this uh, Sunday, unable to go. Nolan Jones, Brent Doyle, Charlie Blackman in the outfield. McMahon, Tovar, Rogers, Montero in the infield with Austin Wentz doing the catching. One out, and this is Jordan Luplo at the plate. So the second lineup, the one that we put in after using a bunch of whiteout is evidently yeah, right the here. right one. It's right here. Hey, if if there's anybody you want to pitch on game 162 to start it off, get this uh, party started, Brent Suter. The way he works, he gets that baseball and he says, let's go. Here's the 0-2 from Brent, and swung on a miss. Quick strike out of Luplo. Got him a deal. That was a changeup. Just had good action at 78 miles an hour on it. Luplo thought it was a fastball. It was the arm action. We talked to uh, to Suter before the game, and we're like, "Whoa, uh, we're not supposed to talk to the starting pitcher." He was like, uh, "A little different for me." What a terrific first inning! Nicely done from Brent Suter. One, two, three. We'll see that Rockies offense when we come back. That was a nine-pitch inning.
Nasty. Batting second for your Colorado Rockies, the second baseman, Brendan Rodgers. And batting third for the Colorado Rockies, the National League Rookie of the Year, Nolan Jones. Batting cleanup, the designated hitter, Chris B -B -B Bryant. Batting fifth, number 24, Ryan McMahon. Batting sixth, the first baseman, Elleris Montero. Batting seventh, Ezekiel Tovar. At the catcher position, Austin wins. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Hey! Batting ninth, number nine, center fieldman, Bretton Doyle. Hey! Charlie Blackman swings at the first pitch. <laughs> all right. You know, first of all, my initial inclination through the first eight guys is why why am I doing it every night? Those guys do a great job. They nailed it. Right? Yes. The only issue I had was center fieldman. Yes. But still, that was thank you to the crew for, for doing that. And but, uh, we got a lot of our crew in yeah. on that. That was awesome. They work so hard behind the scenes for us every night, so thank you all. One out, Brendan Rodgers at the plate. Brendan finishing strong, 264 average. He's hit four home runs all over the last 10 days. On the mound is six foot nine inch Bailey Ober out of the College of Charleston. Yeah, 12th round pick in 2017 by Minnesota. 137 strikeouts for Bailey in 137 innings. His whip is 1.10. And for. The tall right-hander, he'll come at you with the fastball. It will cut and sink a little, change up slider and a curveball, true four-pitch mix. That's our stat cast powered by Google Cloud. It's the first time the Rockies have ever seen Bailey. Well, he's Third pretty tall. in the big leagues. Yeah, at six foot nine, I would say that is pretty tall. The That's red like Drews. <laughs> the red glove matching the red shoes. Spilly, who is it? Your your favorite bullpen? Uh, the blue the blue glove brigade. The, yeah, the, yeah, the blue <laughs> blue glove group, and that's uh, Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee. Rogers goes down. Two outs and Nolan Jones coming up. Uh, what a time it's been for Nolan. 17 game on base straight, 407 during that time. Love the OPS, a little over 1,200. Four home runs, 11 RBIs. Left handed, right handed submarine over the top, hard thrower, soft tosser, doesn't matter to Nolan. Well, we, need, we need two hits and a homer and a stolen base today. Oh, that would be special. He's got to get to the 2020 club, right? He's got to. I say he does it. I think he's got that uh, flair for the dramatic Oof. swing there. So a couple oh. things with uh, Bailey Ober. When you're six foot nine, you get a lot of extension. It, it looks like he's not throwing as hard, right? It's 91 miles an hour, but because of the extension, it's seven feet. It feels like it's 94. You know, it's interesting. His counterpart, at least initially, because Brent Suter is not going to go long into the game. Brent, Brent's, you know, kind of a two-inning guy. He's the opener because Chase couldn't go. Chase Anderson. Longer extension with the 6-4 Brent Suter than even Bailey Ober. Yeah, that's the that's the thing as a hitter when you when you face somebody like a, a Bailey or or even Brent without the, the the extension, the ball just seems to jump on you. 2 2 foul ball. Tallest guy. Randy Johnson for me. You face Randy. Yeah. That's right. How yeah. much? How about for you, Spilly? Uh, I face Randy. Randy was big, but Bailey Ober reminds me a lot of Chris Young, general manager for the Texas Rangers. Chris Young was six foot ten, ran the Princeton offense. That's strike three. That's the off speed pitch, and it's a good one. So a one, two, three first for Bailey Ober. A couple of strikeouts. We'll go to the second at Sunny Coors Field.
Sports Baseball is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. And by Southwest Airlines, Big Heart, and Low Fares. Book now at southwest.com. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Right back at you. <laughs> My favorite part of every day is going into the truck and yelling at every member of the truck to get to work. <laughs> and their least favorite part of the day is you coming in the truck every day. Well, because I'm showing up five hours after they've already shown up to work. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> or six. Connor Siebold will take over, so just one inning for Brent Suter. And he had a terrific first inning. Siebold will face Max Kepler here in the second. Ryan Jeffers and Edward Julien. Connor just recalled on Thursday when Ryan Feltner went on the IL. He was down in Arizona because the, the AAA season had ended a week ago today. So they needed to send five or six guys down to Arizona just to keep them in shape in case they needed to come up here the last week of the season. Connor's one of those guys. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Put that in your pocket, Mac. Lee and Connor. Connor's just like, come on. He's had so many infield. The last two outings for him has been just weak contact after weak contact. Well, Kepler now seven for his last 11. And when you're going well, this is the kind of hit that you get. You got totally jammed, totally sawed off. This ball, I'm going to check it in a minute, see how fast it came off the bat. I'm saying 53. 53 miles an hour. Uh, that's what I'm saying right now, just without looking. Give me a second. 48. <laughs> Ryan Jeffers at the plate. Jeffers homered on Friday. So I, would, I wouldn't have won on the prices right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I was on the price, would you say 53? 53. Yeah, you can't go over. I would have, uh, yeah. I would have done uh, $54 in saddle. <laughs> Two strikes on Jeffers. As we've told you throughout the weekend, Minnesota's locked into the three seed in the American League. They have perhaps something to play for today in that with a win, they would finish at 41 and 40 out on the road. Last time they were above 500 on the road, they had a tremendous year in 2019 away from Minneapolis they won 55 games lost just 26. Now there are 11 and 4 out on the road in the month of September. It's their first playoff berth since 2020. Last time they won a playoff game we discussed this yesterday the fact that they've lost 18 in a row which is just it's just hard to fathom. Mm -hmm. Um, but the last time they won a playoff game was way back in 2004. Yeah, they they only won one in that series against the Yankees in the ALDS. They have not won a series in the postseason since 02. That's going to get through into right field. Stopping at second is Kepler. So two singles, not hit that hard. Two aboard for Edward Julian, the second baseman. This SAP broadcast is brought to you by the Laborers Union and the hardworking men and women in the Rocky Mountain region. Seabold's first offerings in there for a strike. Calling balls and strikes today is David Rackley, Larry Vanover, the crew chiefs. Larry's at first, Edward Moscoso at second, Chris Gachoni's at third. Swung out a missed at 93. Rockies fell way behind yesterday and then uh, tried to come storming back with six runs late. Falling 14 to 6 from Minnesota's standpoint. They did what they've done all year, Spilly. They hit the long ball. They had they had the home run cycle yesterday. 
I was spending a little time with Justin Morneau and he was talking about this lineup of just of how it's constructed. You have 12 guys with over 10 home runs. They do strike out a lot, but it works. Most, most teams that hit home runs do have a higher strikeout rate. Not all. Why is Morneau? I'm Trevor Plouffe, handsome young lad. I, I think the case with Minnesota, because they have homers throughout the entire lineup, you can get away with a 27% strikeout rate, which is what they have. And that's an area, talking about the Rockies, that, and they've known this the last couple of years, I was talking to Bam Bam, we, we talk to Bam Bam all the time, and you know, he's done such good work. Take Brent Doyle, his strikeout rate's down double digits here in the month of September. But as a club, the Rockies have to chase less, strike yes. out far less. They're 28th in baseball and in strikeout percentage. Um, and as Spilly just said, you can live with that when you're hitting well over 200 homers as Minnesota has. But that has been the case with the Rockies. This one finds a hole for Julianne. And here's the throw to the plate. It is not quite in time from Jones. And it's 1-0 as Kepler scores. Julianne had three RBIs last night, starting it off with a seeing eye base hit to left field today to drive in a run. A running two seam fastball. And this could have easily been hit to third, short, but no, it sneaks through. And even with Nolan's great arm out there, and Kepler, who had that 53 mile an hour hit, he comes around to score. You know, with all of the entries and to the Rockies rotation and the number of pitchers that have towed the rubber for Colorado, I don't know if anybody's made more trips in baseball <laughs> no. to the mound than Daryl Scott. I don't think so. Hey, I want to go back just a moment to Justin Morneau and you know, flashback to when he was in a Rockies uniform in 2014 to 2015. He ended up hitting 316 in his career here. It was really fun just to watch him. Of course, he won the batting title in 14 with a 319 average, 160 hits. He had 17 home runs that year, 82 RBIs. Finished down a little bit in that MVP conversation, but boy, could he hit. It was so much fun to watch. He was funny. He stood next to the retired Hall of Fame number 33, and he goes, Billy, when did they retire my number here? I was like, no, <laughs> no. But how about that? He called Larry Walker and asked if, if he could wear number 33. Because that was a number he, he wore for his career in Minnesota. And as a fellow Canadian, of course, Larry said he could wear number 33. Now nobody can wear number 33, which is great. Yeah, and you tried to you tried to keep 19 from Blackman for a couple of years. And fortunately, Charlie finally was able to wrangle that deal. That 19 is going to be up in the rafters at some point. Spilly's going to go out there in the middle of the night <laughs> with like duct tape and write his name <laughs> over Charlie's. It's crazy how the how a number turns into its own its own thing. It's, a, it's recognizable, right? Like you see 42 and you can picture a player. You see 33, you see 17. You can just see Todd right now in the black. Sleeveless, sleeveless jersey. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, as there's a strike out of Willie Castro. So Seabold has his first out. A run in, first and second, and that'll bring up Alex Kirilov. Think, think if you're in Chicago, the Broncos in Chicago today taking on the Bears. If you see 34 in Chicago. Walter Pate. Walter Pate. And if you see 34 in Chicago 50 years from now, <laughs> Walter, Walter Pate. Pate. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, growing up in New York, you see you see a 56. <laughs> it's L Lawrence Taylor. LT. Oh, man, this is served to left field. That's a base hit. That's going to bring home another run. Two to nothing is Kirilov. Well, There's a not second inning home single, runs, four singles. But they're kind of spraying the ball all over the ballpark. Change up. Ends up working away, but not quite down enough. That was the only issue with that pitch. The, the movement was good, but up too much allows Kirloff to drive it to left field to drive in Jeffers. 
Matt Warner at the plate. Warner at Dublin, a homer yesterday. He scored three runs. Morneau is talking about Walner as as this kid being a possibly one of the the better of the of the young group of players that they have. You know, with Julian. But Walner's from Minnesota, from Forest Lake, Minnesota. So he he grew up there, and he's still getting better. But to Southern Miss. Billy, maybe you can get a comp for me because I've been trying to figure it out the last couple of days, just watching how tall he stands, the open stance from the left side, and, and just drawing a blank. Uh, you thinking Matt Carpenter? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the one I was thinking because it's it's seen that swing before. But maybe it's the batting gloves that are throwing me off. Because Matt never wears batting gloves. Two balls, two strikes on Walner. Julian at second, Kirilov at first. Oh. There you go. Nice play. He did make a play. Way to go. Finally. Billy caught that barehanded off the bounce. Give yes, it to your kid. Phenomenal work by you, Spilly. Wow. And hands like a dolphin. Swung on a miss, so Seabolt with a second strikeout. He gets Walner. See it. Bare hand. Nice. I see Glenn in the background diving out of the way. Was he really? Yeah, he was. <laughs> My hands hurt. Y'all good? Okay. Oh, hi, Kyle. Ever. Freeland just said that's the smoothest play you've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Isn't it great that hey. Billy's not just our low hanging fruit. Yeah. He's also like the current players low hanging fruit. A one on Donovan Solano. Hey Billy don't forget after the game you still have a. A glove up here in the closet. You gonna leave it here. You're gonna come get it. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I yeah, got it right here. Bring it out because yeah, I you, you don't know what's going to happen. Ooh. That. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, I was please. asking. Yeah, grab it. <laughs> got a little Nike piece here. Like it. Did you put two fingers at the end, bud? Yep, yep always. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that until a little bit later on in my career. Yeah. Of why it actually works. And for an outfielder, if you can put two fingers in the pinky, it actually allows you to have a little bit more surface area. So you yeah. can open up your glove a little bit bigger. That's my glove. It's like, yep. well, that pocket looks terrible. It's, been it's really bad. It's been sitting there for it's a while. It's really bad. You got some pine tar on the inside. Yeah, it's it's bad. I'll, uh, I'll throw it out the window here. It remains two balls, two strikes on Solano. And normally an outfielder, they I mean the the pocket isn't like flat. That one's flat. I would almost sit my, my glove in my uh, in my locker wide open so I wouldn't lose the form of my glove. That's how I would put it down in the dugout in between innings, just like you're talking about. So it it kept that shape. 30th pitch to the inning and a slider strikes out Solano in the inning. Two runs on four singles for Minnesota. They're up two to nothing.
Last chance. If the Rockies score seven today, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. That would be Monday between four and six to get your Rockies taco special at Boston Taco Bell. Chris Bryant swings and misses at the first offering. Rockies trailing two to nothing. Bailey Ober struck out two in a one two three first inning. Chris returned to the lineup yesterday. He'd been ill earlier in the week. Be focused next year. He focused every year on on staying on the field, but I know it's been frustrating for Chris. Today, just his 121st game since signing with the Rockies. Just a, a myriad of different ailments. Yeah, you had the the foot, you had the back. This one broke his hand, broke on, his a hand on a pitch when he was hit by a pitch. Chris goes down and that'll bring up Ryan McMahon. Well it's a change up from Ober and. With that big tall lanky frame it comes at you much quicker and it's hard to decipher if it's a fastball or a change up. That last one was a change up. So here's Ryan back. You know we say this throughout the year as uh, Ryan is going to ground out here. He is a guy that we have immense respect for because good bad or indifferent he posts up every day. He's always for the media that you know cover the team day to day. He's always at his locker. He's always respectful. He is a pros pro and I greatly admire Ryan McMahon. I want to say that. Let's go downstairs to Kelsey Winger. Yeah, thanks, guys. You know, you talk about what Alaris Montero has done at the plate. He's played in more games in the second half. We've seen him get more consistent at bats. You know, before he was splitting playing time with CJ Crone. Now we're working in Chris Bryant at first, but now homered in three consecutive games. This is a bat who's fighting for playing time next year. He feels like he has something to prove, and the Rockies know that there's more in there. We talked about it in the open, but since August 14th, his last 35 games, a 315 average, 16 extra base hits, 20 RBI and a 946 OPS. You know the Rockies have to be really, really pleased to see Alaris Montero's bat really come around and end the season strong. Well, he's homered, as you said, three straight, four out of five. And when you start talking about a 35-game body of work, obviously it's not a full year, but it's not also Huey a week. Right. It's not, hey, you know, five good games. Awesome. <laughs> or even a, you know, a couple good weeks. You're like, okay, I need to see the adjustments from you after the league adjusted to what you can do. I think that's always the key for any young player. It's, you know, are you pa passing that nightly test? Because every night it's a different test. And it's a game of constant adjustments. Even more so, Huey, than when, when you oh, play yeah. because we're, I, it, I think it, the information right now is so much greater. Inside out swing, towering fly ball to deep right. Going back is Walner, and in the middle of the track, he makes the catch. And the Rockies go in order in the second. They trail two to nothing. We go to the third, back in a moment.
Theory. Add peanuts to my grocery list. We're back top of the third inning and the number two hitter in the lineup for Rocco Baldelli is Jordan Luplo. Second inning for Connor Siebold. And that's pop foul out of play. So what do players do immediately following the season. I know you guys are going to reflect here in a moment. I talked to a couple of guys in the clubhouse today. And you know whether it's golf or just absolutely <laughs> not having to set an alarm. What's weird though. Not having to think about. Even for us. Where, where I am in terms of my batting average or my OPS yeah, or, or how many strikes I threw in the last outing. Your schedule is so designed for you for basically seven months. And so for the first couple of days after the season ends. It's really hard because you're constantly looking at your watch going oh yeah I, at at whatever time two o'clock I need to leave for the stadium or whatever it may be. I think that's the hardest thing for a player is well I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to work out. I don't have to do X. I think that that's where it's really interesting for players at first two to three days even the first week. Back. Throws across the diamond to get Jordan Luplo. Kyle Farmer coming up. October is here, so get ready for what happens next. MLB postseason begins Tuesday. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for the full schedule. Spilly, I know more than the physical side, just letting the mind rest is a huge component for players when the season comes to a conclusion. Well, it's because it's such a grind. I mean, you just don't realize it. This whole play from Tovar. How about those kicks he's sporting today? He's feeling, yeah, those are cotton candy looking kicks. <laughs> those are great. Why do you wait till 162 I to break know. those out? Well, you get your first full season of service time and then you feel a little fresh. Yeah. Now I can't wait to see what he's going to wear next year. Opening day, by the way, March 28th. In downtown Phoenix against the Diamondbacks, the Rockies will not have to travel far after spring training in Scottsdale. Just change hotels. Basically. Max Kepler, a little dribbler up the third base line to start a two run rally in the second for Minnesota. Looking up on the uh, scoreboard behind Charlie Blackman and Every game in game 162 starts at the same time. It starts at 3 o'clock Eastern. Did you see Houston's already put a five spot up on uh, Arizona? If Houston wins and Texas loses, Houston, which clinched a playoff spot yesterday, they were in a tenuous position, the defending world champs, they'll actually win the American League West. Yes. They have the tiebreaker over the Rangers. When they lose a bye. Texas would lose a bye if they if they are not yeah. able to win tonight. That's huge. That is enormous. And Texas in the third inning in Seattle scoreless. And Seattle, you it's know, so Seattle eliminated. will be professional. They have to, even though they're thoroughly disappointed losing last night and being eliminated. If they beat Texas today. That they're trying to help Houston, but it would help immensely. Arizona celebrated in. in the pool last night. Houston celebrated in the pool. That's that's like any team that clinches near in Arizona jumps in that pool in right center field. Two balls, two strikes on Max Kepler. Kepler last couple of months. He's been terrific for Minnesota. He's got a 927 OPS. Been a well above average player for several years now. 
three and two from Seabold. The Twins locked him up to that five year deal. Blanco around the same time to keep those guys in place. Popped up. This is playable. Foul ground. Ryan McMahon waiting. He makes the catch. Good inning for Siebel bouncing back from that second. Middle of three. The Twins lead the Rockies two to nothing. Hi Hannah, how are you? Hannah handling uh, graphics. Brian Little handling graphics. That's Derek Mooneyham. D he's money. Got the, uh, he's got the the bug, like making sure that the count is right, the outs are right, the scores right. And that that we call that the bug on the on the bottom right. There you go, one and zero. Oh. Nice job, Derek. Ezekiel Tovar leading it off for the Rockies here in the third, trailing two to nothing. Last opportunity, fellas, for Tovar to break the tie in rookie doubles in franchise history with one Todd Help, both with 37 doubles. I was talking to Bam Bam about Ezekiel, and because of his makeup, he's just going to continue to get better. You. You don't worry. I mean, first of all, he's only 22, but you don't worry about him peaking or certainly not doing what's necessary to keep on growing. And we've seen it week to week and, and you know, month to month this year, his growth. Breaking ball a little bit out front, shallow center, and getting there is Willie Castro. Austin wins coming up. Now I'm with you real quick on, on Tovar. 153 games now he played. So he's he's figured out how to how to do it. Wynn swings through that fastball. Two and one. It's also a strange time of year sometimes for veteran guys that are not signed for the following year. Austin wins. Certainly falls into that category. It's always when you walk through the locker room the last day and you know there's going to be some guys, some of your buddies that aren't going to be back next year. And that's always, it's a weird, this is a weird day. In that regard, I mean, you got some other guys that are retiring today. I mean, Miggy, 
can be done. Adam Wainwright. Yeah, I mean, you have guys that are all-time players, yeah. you know, like an Adam Wainwright, like a Miguel Cabrera. This ball down the right field line has got a little bit of left to right on it naturally, and it goes foul. But there are so many veteran players, and, and, and I say this, you know how the, the immense respect I have for, for both of you guys as people and as players. I mean, I love the kid Spilly, but Spilly had a fabulous career. You had a career that spanned 12 years. But again, there wasn't the, the walk off celebration no. that very few get, like a Miguel Cabrera or Joey Votto, right? And it just, if you for us, Spilly, right? We see guys, or we mention a guy in the on the way to the ballpark or maybe during a commercial break we're like hey whatever happened to that oh man that guy has been out of the league now for a couple of years right that's how most guys they kind of just fade off well Spilly's not with well, us right no, now but you're, but you're right away, but it, it, you look at it and you're like okay is he still playing or is he maybe overseas or is just done the other thing about it too is it's always hard for the player because you know some guys might know it's the end or some guys are hoping they can play a few more years <laughs> but the game tells you you're done one and two on Doyle Doyle's improvement you can see it at the plate Last 21 ball games, he's hit a solid 280 strikeout rate way down. That's 119th consecutive game out in center field for Brenton now. I will say this, and I, and I love to speak for you, so I'm going to do it okay. right now. I'm going to be really ticked off, and so are you, if he doesn't win a gold glove in center. Because he, he deserves he, it. He That's a bobble does. for a moment. But Solano stays with it. Well, nine in a row set down to begin the ball game by Bailey Ober. Rasm allowed this. I don't think Mark Rasm was aware of this. Look they at it. Even, yeah. Like he's fallen behind already. Simple tasks. We tried to talk to him last inning, and this is what he was, preparing, he was preparing to do. For. And now there's going to be some bad hops no. where there would never be. He's going to take care of his buddies. Well, it was. Have to ask him, but I remember he he spent one whole day with the grounds crew one time, and remember he didn't bring his batting gloves or his gloves, and he had blisters galore. Yeah, I do vaguely remember that. Ryan Jeffers at the plate, he singled and scored. There he goes. Look at that. This is amazing because 
Stacy's complained multiple times. Spilly's far, far better half. That Spilly doesn't even know where the uh, where a broom is in the house, <laughs> where a vacuum cleaner is. Well, the section he did out on the field looks really nice. Yeah, it's still panting. Yeah, that's a lot of work for you. Hey, hey, Spilly, I was just trying to remember when you spent the day with the grounds crew and then you had blisters. Oh, days. yeah, because I tamped. I tried to do the tamping. Uh, so first off, we got to thank Adam Kerr, Michael Dudor, Parker Fields, Matt Heinen, Hung Nguyen, Jake McCoy, Owen McGinney, uh, Jeff Pollock, Colin Reedy, Jim Schumacher, Adam Stewart, Miles Tapscott, Eric Winchell, and Doug Zabinski. What a group Mark Rasm has put together. So much fun to just be around these guys. We, we see them day in, day out. Um, I know when we watch these Rockies game, the, the first thing you see is the field. Uh, and it's pretty cool to think uh, how much effort goes involved that, that you don't even see day to day. But it's the one thing that we notice at all times when you're watching Rockies baseball. And we said this before, and it's not hyperbole, that because of the wild temperature changes and you know, snow in April, May at times, even I think June. 100 see, degree temperature. Yeah, that, that they have the biggest challenge in baseball keeping this field immaculate. And when you talk to the infielders, guys like Jeff Houston, who, who I mean, that's their office, they rave about the surface at Coors Field. And it's compared very favorably to the service at Dodger Stadium which is year in and year out just like Coors Field um, widely complimented for just how consistent it is and and that's what you want as an infield consistency we talk about that for a player that's what I want when I go to approach a ground ball Montero with an easy play Julianne's retired that'll bring up Willie Castro one last thing on on the grounds career it's it's a full time job for these guys, but at the same time, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the grounds crew members, Hung Nguyen, uh, it has been a DPS teacher for 17 years. He, he's teaching first grade. So, I mean, he comes here after school and then he works the grounds crew. So, um, special thanks to those guys nonstop. We, we talk about day in, day out, what they do. It's appreciated. Willie Castro with a perfect bunt for a hit so with two outs he's aboard in front of Alex Kirilov you might be thinking game 162 you know, lay down the bunt but they're still getting ready and they're still trying to perfect stuff for the playoffs and then you also have the advanced scouts looking at this too that, that are going to play the twins so they're going okay I got a mark down he might bunt so I got to bring that third baseman in and then you can hit a ball past him. Yeah I think a lot of times with two outs nobody on you want to you want a guy thinking hey really double. extra base hit double homer in the case of and Austin Wentz is very much aware of this so is Connor Seabolt in the case of Willie Castro because of his ability to steal bases he has 33 of them. His bunt single could turn into yes. a double if you're not careful. Yeah, 33, that's good for fourth in the American League. Tenth in all of baseball. One and one on Kirilov. He had an RBI single to left in the second inning. Two to nothing. Minnesota leading. And that's Tomahawked into right for a base hit. And bobbled for a moment by Charlie, so Castro will take an extra 90 feet. Hit pretty hard by Kirloff and right and Castro was going to stop at second until he saw the bobble. First and third and Matt Walner's up. 
Seabold struck him out in the second. Ball one strike on Walner. Twenty seventh appearance for Seabold. Got thirteen starts this year. Thirteen starts. And all those starts came in a stretch between May 4th and July 15th. Over in a trade with Boston back in January. Six starts for Boston. Back in 21 and 22. Two and two on Walner. Change of pace. So that'll end the inning. Couple of two out singles. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Rockies trailing two to nothing against Minnesota in this game 162. Look who's on the grounds crew. Charlie Blackman leading things off. The Rockies have got three innings without producing a base runner against Bailey Ober. In fact, Ober has struck out four. So it'll be Charlie, Brendan Rodgers, and Nolan Jones. And this is on two hops to the first baseman, Kirilov. Ten in a row out of the gate, set down by Ober, who typically is a five inning guy. See how long he goes today. Hey, time for reunions. Barbecues and Rockies baseball. Get to a dugout store for all your Rockies needs. Your one-stop shop for gear and game tickets. Five locations in Aurora, Littleton, Flatiron, Greeley, and Colorado Springs. Brendan Rogers has reached in 15 out of 16. A 414 on base percentage during those 16, including four homers. Look out. That's up. I think the other thing we talk about too is this last day of the season not getting hurt. That's 
paramount. I don't even say that. I don't throw it out there in the universe? No. Well, I was just thinking after that one came up and in to Brendan. I mean, like, he needs to get hurt anymore. No. Okay. He needs, he needs like, 10 years of really good health. Yeah. He's earned it. Two balls and a strike. Looking at this today, fellas. Top three payrolls in baseball. Okay. Mets, Yankees, Padres, all will not participate and, in the playoffs. And for the Mets, Buck Showalter is not coming back. He announced that today. So Buck Showalter. Two years in New York, and you wonder. I mean, he has such a great reputation, deservedly so as a manager. You wonder if there will be another team, whether it's this offseason or yeah. ensuing offseasons, that dials up Buck and, and whether he's interested in uh, continuing on. The, the Mets have almost come out and said that they're playing for 2025 in terms of. Thinking about the postseason, not not that they don't try to make it in 2024, but it's like they've completely downshifted as to what they did last offseason. Right. Three and two on Rogers. Big key for the Rockies next year and for Brendan is to stay healthy because you know how productive he could be offensively and he's a gold glove winner at second. Chased up a little bit there two outs that strikeout number five for over time now for a live in game odds update brought to you by bet three six five total runs. The Rockies at three and a half. It sits right now. This week, new customers can bet one dollar and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets. Use code Go Rocks when you sign up with Bet Three Six Five. Nolan Jones got caught looking at an off-speed pitch his first time up, and he gets a curveball for strike one. Nolan started the day at two ninety-seven. Now I just I'm thinking I got to ask Dougie this real quick. 296. Yeah, it sits so now. If he if he were to go three for four, which means three straight hits now, does that get him to 300? Dougie's like throwing papers <laughs> all around. He's got it somewhere and he can't find the note. Now he's looking under the table. He put his donut down first. <laughs> That's fouled off. <laughs> And I, so as he's doing that, we have to give a special thank you. I know to, where you're going. To Ashley. A Ashley Freeland, Freeland. who is, uh, she, she brings donuts on yep. Sundays. Sundays, sometimes day games. So she always just brings a, like. And Huey's her best customer. Oh, I just, I look forward to this day so much. By the way, three hits, three yeah. straight hits for Nolan. We get him to 302. Okay, we'll do it because one of them has to be a home run too to get him to the 20 mark. Uh, you asked for a homer. This is deep center field. You nailed it. There's number 20. Nolan Jones with a ball to right. Give another Rolex, KB. And you know what? That is to the extreme big boy part of the stadium. And then he gave some little kids right down by the dugouts. He slapped their hands as he went by, too. That is a special mark. And that is so cool to see. Because 
again, you played this game for a long time, and you go into a ball game saying, man, I, I need a, a double today. It'd be really important. Homers are hard to hit. They are. And you know he's wanted to hit a homer to get to 20. Chris Bryant to deep right. That's gathered in to end the inning. But good for Nolan Jones. I mean, this is an absolute blast for number 20. And we like to come around and, and show you some of our crew. And, and right now I've been the lower third. I'm here with Steve Brown. Stevie B has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. How long have you been around here for? I've been doing Rockies baseball from day one. Day one. Day one. And I remember this man down one time in Tucson, <laughs> spring training, and he was doing a we're out having some fun. <laughs> it sounds like I had him out at uh, the Cactus Moon or one of those cow ponies we are out at the cow pony brownie for you i mean doing this job does it feel like a job ever for you it doesn't i love shooting i love shooting baseball we have a great time we have a great crew and we have fun we do have fun this is a family you also i mean you have all your camera camera is a special group of people you guys are kind of psychotic but at the same time at the same time, you guys put in so many hours. What is it about this group specifically that maybe sets us apart from everyone else? I think it's the camaraderie that we back each other up. We care for each other. We're, we're looking out for each other. If one person's having a bad day, we can help that person. And that's we have a good community of people here. Oh, we love you, Brownie. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to give a shout out to the, our other camera guys out there Chris Seiler, Kevin White, Jim Hawks, Roger Meeks, Brownie, Sam Hernison, who never keeps the camera straight, Joe Healy, Mike Byram, David Starser, Bo McWilliams, Big Bo down the first base camera well. And then we have Kevin Pierre running RF. No crash today, no Ringo, uh, but we have a really cool and special group. Guys. It is a special group and uh, a really talented group. I say this every year that we're fortunate for many reasons to live in Denver, but because it's such a beautiful place to live, there's a lot of talented folks who could make their home anywhere, choose to make their home here, and we all benefit. Jordan Luplo at the plate. Stevie has been around so long that, uh, you know, and, and he's not alone, that offspring are now part yes. of the television team. Two and one. Well, the, well he's right. They, all this production crew, they become part of our big family because we see them every day. At least 81 days out of the year. True statement. You know that whole dugout still buzzing. They're excited for Nolan Jones.
three and two. Now they just want him to get on base again, and then you just go that first pitch. <laughs> just like uh, I'm going to steal right now. Ball four. Kyle Farmer coming up. You know, one day you're your big league manager, next day you <laughs> play shortstop. He's just a player leagues, again. Bat three hole. Kyle Farmer, Jorge Polanco, <laughs> reference to last night where they got to, and I put this in air quotes, manage the club, Rocco Baldelli. Thought that would be fun. Still have dreams occasionally, like I, I'm playing. Do you? Yeah, that I'm still. Are you playing well in the dreams? <laughs> no, because I can't get out to the position. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're I'm like, supposed to I'm be supposed there. I'm supposed to be there. there. Where's my glove? There's a ground ball there, and I can't <laughs> get there. <laughs> or they'll start the game without me in, in, you know, whatever, second base. I was like, what? Oh, I. So that never leaves. Kind of like the fallen dreams. Yes. Yes. Kyle Farmer's hit it to his position mate twice. Ezekiel Tovar. One out, one on, two to one ball game. Slider first strike, one and one. Come looking over the standings. There are two teams currently with 100 wins. Atlanta and the National League at 104 going into game 162. Baltimore with 101 over the American League. And there's an opportunity for the Dodgers to join that group. They're sitting at 99 victories. They're playing the Giants in Northern California right now. No score in the fifth inning. If they do, uh-oh, now they got... Uh, Luplo hung up. Wins throws to second. And Montero chases him down. We go two, four, three. And Austin did the right thing. Just start running at him, get him to stop, and then commit. All he just says, I'll run you down. You know, it's a it's a heady play because I think sometimes catchers, young catchers, you know, I'm talking about big league catchers, they think, well, I got to throw it somewhere. Just because you have all the gear on, the right play is to run at that lead shoulder. Yes, and, and get them to to make a decision on what they're doing. Seabolt's got it, and that ends the inning. Middle of five. It's a two to one ball game. There's one of our terrific three post game producers, Nicole Gates.
What a special, special day for Miguel Cabrera, who's playing in his final game of his illustrious 21-year career. How the Tigers have handled this top-notch. You see right there, Miggy, 24, really cool display with the fans standing up. Also really special before the game, both of his parents threw out the first pitch. His kids announced his first plate appearance. What they've been doing this whole week to honor Miguel Cabrera in his final games has been incredible. And guys, I don't know if you saw the gifts that the Tigers gave to Miguel Cabrera. Yes. A custom pair of Jordans with different um, baseballs from memorable games of his career a custom pair it's the coolest yeah, thing I saw those. most unique thing they gifted him a chair from the stadium had all of his teammates sign it just top notch from how they have handled this and much much deserved for one of the greatest players in the game Miguel Cabrera. well yeah I mean what what can you give him that he doesn't already have but those cleats I think lock it up but I will say this so seeing that one Kels did you see what the Cardinals gave Adam Wainwright? Oh yeah. Today? A, pu a puppy. puppy. He had said that his kids, they wouldn't get a dog until he retired. So I'm, I'm sure you saw the video, Jeff. Yes, I did. The whole ceremony out on the field, they bring out like a picnic <laughs> basket. And do you think he knew? You can't just give uh, someone a puppy. <laughs> well, maybe they talked to his wife. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, they brought it in the little picnic basket. That was so cute, the way he picked it up out of the picnic basket. And I believe the, the little puppy had a, a Wainwright jersey on. Yeah, or a little <laughs> scarf or something. That was that was so good. Well, and then the other one, Kels, was in, in San Francisco with Brandon Crawford probably playing his last game for the Giants, where he had all four of his kids throw out the ceremonial first pitch today. Yeah, fun. Two strikes on Eloris Montero. Fly ball to the warning track in right in his first at bat. Rockies have one hit, one base runner. He was briefly on base. Nolan Jones as he jogged around the bases. His 20th home run of the year. It's a two to one ball game. Rockies been out hit six to one. Montero can continue that late season trend of like homering almost every day. Not in this at bat. That is strikeout number seven for Bailey Ober. He has thrown many pitches. No, and he's had a strikeout every inning. This is via the change of 67 pitches now for Ober. 47 strikes. Nick Mears is getting loose in the Rockies bullpen. Tap to third. Solano in time to get Tovar. Rockies go quietly in the fifth. We'll go to the sixth inning. Two to one, Minnesota.
Brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Big Heart, and Low Fares. Book now at southwest.com. Where is Spilly now? That's what we're playing today. Oh, there's Sam. Wow. wow. That was like gregarious on your part. Nobody's Somebody hiding behind the uh, camera. Saw Dougie a moment ago. Dougie just back from Missoula, Montana. He was uh, producing a football game yesterday. Spilly, what do you got? Oh, I'm in center field with Mikey B, and uh, this is arguably one of the tougher cameras to operate because you're in on every single pitch. Mikey B's been one of the one of the big Rocky fans here, and uh, yesterday he actually made me sign his uh, Spielborg's jersey, which he's had since what 2007. Easily, uh, yeah. My wife and I have been fans of the Rockies for a long, long time. In fact, we met just over here uh, back when I was playing like men's league ball and stuff, and um, it's been a, just awesome to be able to finally make it to this point where I'm shooting the team that I love. Is that fun for you? I mean, like you're a, you're probably a fan first, and now you get to do a job that is not what we consider a job. Like, does this feel like fun for you? It's it's been something I've been trying to do since I was 13. Uh, my uncle's a big camera guy for CBS and whatnot, and I finally got to the point where I uh, <laughs> I, I, I made it. To where I wanted to do for since I was a kid, it was great. So yeah, it doesn't feel like a job. I'm happy about it every day, and uh, it's just a fun, fun time. Okay, so most of the time, like I got nervous running onto the field today with the with the grounds crew, and then you get butterflies doing certain things, right? Getting on camera for the first time, and uh, for me, this is my tenth season. Did you get butterflies when you started taking over this camera? A little bit. Uh, this is the first time I've done this one this season, and uh, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Trying to follow these pitches are pretty quick. <laughs> and of course, as I'm talking, all the guys are giving me a bunch of stuff in my head. So I, I can't even really think. Um, trying to focus is, is a little tough, but uh, <laughs> I love this group. All right, before I let you go, and before, because I don't want you to, to not keep the camera straight, everybody wants, is, am I your wife's favorite player still too, or no? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she, she gave me a shirt so uh, that I could get you to sign it too, man. It's we've been we've been fans of yours for a long time. I remember watching the spill in the beans show and you and Giambi making fun of each other. It was pretty good stuff, man. I, All right, well, I appreciate you do a fantastic job. Keep it straight, and uh, I'll see your wife and you after the game today. All right, guys, buddy. back to you. You'd hope that uh, you know at some point in time that. Uh, Infatuation with Spilly would <laughs> move on. One out, Ryan Jeffers at the plate, single and a strikeout. I love that story though, seriously. You know, Rockies fan growing up. Yeah. And then be yeah. able to come here every yeah. day and yeah. do a job you love and that's neat stuff. A one on Jeffers from Nick Mears. First inning of work for Nick. Four innings for Connor Seabold. Connor gave up a couple runs on six hits. Brent Suter was the opener. He pitched a one, two, three first. Again, Chase Anderson was supposed to go today. Chase, a little bit of a finger issue. Chase really made a statement. First six starts were really good with the Rockies. Yes. Hit a little bit of a bump in the road. The last three, I mean, lights out, including seven no-hit innings. Yeah, and then the last one against the Dodgers. I, I, I know he wanted to go today, but there ha there comes a point when you have that little blister, you don't want it to affect anything, or you say, oh, I, I can do it, I can make it through just this last start. Strike out of Jeffers, and in the, in the case of Chase, who's you know, hoping to, to be in the mix next year as the Rockies rebuild their rotation. Chase a 147 ERA over those last three ball games. You look at that pitch. And over 18 in the third, the opposition in those last three hit a whopping 167, slugged 183. So, I mean, he was just tremendous. Got the victory in his last outing. That that changeup cutter combination really has that perfected. No swing, two and zero oh on Edward Julian. That's 
was there. Everybody's different in how they ramp back up position player pitchers and, and, and some pitchers do it differently. I was talking to Jake Bird today. and Jake's going to take a, you know, a couple weeks off maybe for a couple weeks throw really lightly he said you know a couple times uh, a week and then slowly start to ramp up again. I talked to Victor Vodnik. Victor said he take he'll take like a week off and then he'll start throwing bullpens again. It's interesting how that has all changed uh, recently as far as guys throwing. I was talking to Keith Duggar about this so I don't know sometime in the last two or three weeks and I said because it used to be guys wouldn't pick up a baseball again until January and then they would start throwing and I said why do guys start throwing much earlier he goes we found that if they do that it's better it's actually better for the arm just to keep it loose it's not like you're going out there and you're cranking it back up again but just going through the subtle motion of throwing yeah that's what Jake Bird was saying and that's why even in a down period you know he's going to throw you know muscle memory those those muscles being used because um, I remember it used to be when you start cranking it back up in January be like oh my gosh my arms just like locked up <laughs> no and, and again that was your error yeah no as you know Huey no one does that now no there's no, no one that, that won't even the uh, the position players you may not pick up a bat for a month but I guarantee you You're by November tossing. 1st yeah guys are starting to swing again that'll intensify the closer you get to spring training 3 and 0 on Willie Castro after the walk to Juliet And that's inside. So back to back, two out walks, two strikeouts, two walks. Let's get a message from your front range Toyota stores. A little meeting at the mound. <laughs> well, then I was just looking at the meeting in center field. Nolan Jones sprinting over and he's having a chat with, with Brent Doyle. Now we'll go back. That's the other great thing about playing <laughs> center field. Spiller, are you back on? <laughs> Not sure what that was. I don't know. But the great thing about playing center field is we you know when there's a pitching change. Yeah. The Everybody, other two guys, they come to you. They go, yeah, yeah. You it's always like, host the party. Right. You never have to travel. No. And, and the other good thing is you don't ever have to plan for that part <laughs> because guys are just going to come. Yeah. They're going to come right to you at center field. And sometimes you, you may not want them to come, but no invitation sent and they're still going to visit. <laughs> it's not like you just put your hand up and say stop. You know, it'd be, it really would not be a good sign in terms of team chemistry if there's a pitching change. You see each guy in their respective spot in the outfield. Right? Yes. Ooh. Those guys must not get along real well, huh? Kirilov takes ball one. Jake Bird, the aforementioned Jake Bird, up and throwing in the bullpen. And this is on the ground of Brendan Rogers. And that'll end the inning. Two left to board, middle of six. It's a two to one ball game.
It's my favorite spot to be. Here's Scotty, here's Jacques. I usually come in and say, what's up, team? Friends, Hi, there's Andy back here. Here's Javi. This is arguably one of the more important people uh, to the show because he is constantly running back our our video highlights and everything. He's also a big Rockies fan. Javi, how many years have you been watching Rockies baseball? 20. This is my 17th year as the leader. As the leader of the EBS, <laughs> you are the leader of us. Do you have a favorite moment? I do. I have two of them. One, of course, was Cargo and hit the cycle. And the second was when you hit the Grand Slam in off San Francisco. There you go. So there's Javi. We're back in tape. Not everybody has good uh, memories and highlights. Sometimes there's some lowlights because we, you know, they have to listen to us broadcasters all the time. Uh, but this gives you a sense of what the truck is like. These guys work their tail off. We love Javi. We're going to see Javi in the postseason with all the different stuff he does. We'll also give you another tour, a little bit more behind the scenes. Here's Eddie. Here's our guy. Mooney, who runs the bug. Now I can mess up the bug. I can I can change the count so it's wrong. I can give it, make it one two. I can do whatever. Mooney, you realize that you're in charge of so much. Uh, yeah, I do realize that. I'm the show. Wait, I, we thought Javi was the show. How are you the show? Uh, he thinks he is, but I really am. <laughs> so we got Mooney. Then over here in the corner, we got Brian Little, who does a lot of the graphics that you see on the on the show. Uh, we've had. We've had Brian, we've had Hannah, we've had Susan. Uh, at home, we have Krista. Hi, Krista. Uh, so we have a big, big crew. And then up front, this is the beauty of, uh, of beat in showbiz. You might not be able to play baseball, but you could still be part of a baseball game, which I think is really important. We also have Erica, who's our director. Al Pal, Allison over here is our uh, producer. Big uh, Eagles fan, so she was watching the game most of the time. And then we got Joey over here. Joey's our TD. We also have Gerard that does TD. Um, basically, when they're saying, give us a graphic, Al Powell will tell Joey to do something, and Joey will push a button. So there you go. That's the Death Star. All right, all right Al, thank you. That's enough of Spilly and that. But that, you know what? Those folks, I, I always tell people that who are enamored of what we do up in the booth the talking heads if you really want to see the epicenter and you want to see a fascinating portion the most fascinating portion at least for me of how television is made you go to the television truck this is on the ground a second and those folks are here literally you know six seven hours before the game actually starts. Yeah, a lot of times I'll just be waking up and Allison will already be sitting, you know, sending us the rundown of what we're going to be talking about in the open today. That's how early and, and those the, and the two, folks get to work. Right, and the, and the two captains, and they're the absolute best. Allison Behill, that's a pretty good bunt by Doyle, but well, it's thrown up the right field line by Solano. He was expecting it. But it's still going to be a bunt single and then a throwing error on Solana. So Doyle reaches with one out and now he's in scoring position in a two to one ball game. Well, laying down the bunt just down by one so it, it will be a base hit and then an error on Solano his fifth of the season. He's still continuing to do the things you need to do in game 162 talking about Britton Doyle to make sure too that that batting average we're talking about it 200 might not sound. Great, but where he started, where he was, where he is now, I think it's a big, big number. Absolutely. Charlie stepping up for the third time. Charlie today playing in, by the way, game number 1,500. How many guys have played 1,500 big league games? How many? Before Charlie, 75. With one team. With one team. Right. It's more than, obviously, a lot of guys have played 1,500 games. Not a ton, but with one team. Anyhow the, the captain the two captains of our ship day to day throughout the season going back to spring training Allison Behill and Tavis Strand and they're the best I mean it's on the ground a second Charlie's going to get thrown out two outs with Doyle going to third and we're really fortunate because they're really really good at what they do and they're fun to be around. And we're not always fun to be around. Or at least I'm not always fun to be around. That's what my 
yourself under the bus. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. And Erica, you saw Erica, who does a ton of our directing. Jared, who's you know so talented, TDs directs as well. Joel directs some. And and a big send off to Braden, who's uh, occasionally in that chair. Braden's going to the Golf Channel, which is appropriate. Yeah, yeah, that's because really neat. he's a, like a two point something index. Yeah, I think he got the golf membership thrown in too. At least I would have. And let's not forget about Mike Coniglio too. Coniglio, yeah, that's right. Coniglio produces uh, he produces uh, games for us, and pre and post game, really talented. Shout out to Mike. So Brendan Rogers trying to tie things up against Bailey Ober. And this is in the air right center field. But it will be tracked down out there by Andrew Stevenson who just came into center field. Doyle left at third. We'll go to the seventh. Two to one Minnesota. Rockies trail by a run as we go to the seventh inning. Charlie Blackman, as we were just discussing, playing in his 1500th career game. 76th player to do that with one team all time. And Nolan Jones with his 20th home run of the year above the deep center field. Story of the game, Bailey Ober's pitched really well. And actually a group of Rockies have pitched uh, well. Only one run given, excuse me, two runs given up. Connor Seabold. Nick Mears threw a scoreless sixth inning, and now Jake Bird's out there for the seventh. What was talking about Jake today in the pregame because the question was asked, you know, with the type of season. Think about Jake and the number of appearances, the games that he's had. Well, and today, today's 70, Huey. That, that, not that's what I mean. That, and you go back to spring training, how many guys left spring training on an opening day roster that were bullpen guys? that post up every single day and that's one of the things that was said by buddy today so first of all immense respect where you go and take the baseball in basically half the games never turn it down and I learned this many moons ago from from George Frazier who unfortunately is not with us anymore and George was you know a very very good setup man for a number of years in the big leagues. And he said if you're a reliever and you get the ball 60 65 70 times in a season guess what you're going to bleep up you know mm -hmm. 10 or 12 that's just it, it, you're not going to go out and throw zeros up no. every time nobody does that I don't care who you are it's like a hitter never going into a slump but you have to have the old like a cornerback in, in football you got to have a short memory. And you have to have a lot of guts and guile. And Jake Bird has demonstrated that. So it's been a really good year for the former UCLA Bruin. That's going to drop into right for a base hit for Donovan Solano. Oh 
After Solano is Jordan Luplo. So Luplo with one out and one on. One on loop low. Jake still firing <laughs> mid plus 90 uh, bullets. Fouled off. It's good downstairs. Kelsey, what's cooking? Well, the two guys hanging out at home plate right now actually know each other very, very well. And Jordan Luplo and Austin wins. They were teammates at Fresno State, but that's not the only connection. Jordan got engaged to Austin's sister Holly earlier this season, and Jordan was in Austin's wedding this off season. You can see the picture right there: Austin and his wife Allison, Holly and Jordan. So we talk all the time about the conversations that happen at first base, the conversations that happen at home plate. I'm sure they're having some conversations up there right now. He said they got breakfast earlier this week and uh, Jordan had to ask for his stamp of approval to take his his sister out on a date. Austin obviously gave it the stamp and now they're about to get married. Jordan right now saying you know what my brother in law <laughs> stole that pitch. I can't <laughs> believe David you called that a strike. Come on. I guarantee you at Thanksgiving they'll be talking about this pitch. But it was a strike when Jordan goes back and looks at it. That's funny. <laughs> He'll still swear that it was a ball though. Oh yeah. Kyle Farmer takes a strike. We go, remember at 256 <laughs> on that last game 162 in the seventh inning. I got squeezed. Yeah. <laughs> Farmer 0 for 3, he's hit it on the ground three times. Solano at first base. He is not going anywhere. Huey mentioned it earlier. You want to stay healthy in game 162. And if you're going to the postseason, you want to certainly make sure you stay healthy in game 162. Houston now up on Arizona six to nothing in the sixth. Seattle's up over Texas one nothing in the seventh. Again, if, if those two scores hold, Houston will actually win the West. And Texas would all of a sudden be playing early in the week as a wild card. A walk to Farmer, two aboard with two outs, and Max Kepler coming up. A reminder, the 2024 schedule is already out, and it includes the Boston Red Sox, Texas Rangers, and Baltimore Orioles right here at Coors Field. Opening day is April 5th against the Tampa Bay Rays. Looking ahead to groups, suites, or season tickets, go to Rockies.com slash tickets. Kepler, an infield hit in the second, and he would score. Both runs for the Twins came in the second. Really nice Sunday crowd on this final day of the 2023 season. 30th anniversary season, 31st obviously. 33,375 and look at the uh, season total. 2.6 plus million through the gates. And I know it's been a disappointing year, disappointing few years in terms of wins and losses, but Rockies fans and, and not just this city and this state, but the whole region continue to fabulously support the Rockies and brighter days ahead. And you mentioned it last night in the broadcast too with the, with the game on Friday night for Minnesota. That was the third largest crowd they played in front of yeah, this they, year. They played it at two larger at Dodger Stadium and then the 47 plus thousand on Friday night here at Coors Field. One and two on Kepler. Dodgers, by the way, in San Francisco, leading five to nothing. Uh, you know what? Let me correct that. Is Trevor Larnick, who's uh, hitting for Kepler. Larnick, he had the grand slam yesterday. The Dodgers win today. 
It'll be their 100th win of the year. And other than the strike, not strike short year, the, the COVID shortened year of 2020, that's four straight 100 win seasons for LA. Two and two on Larnick. Well, that grand slam he hit, that was the eighth grand slam that the Twins had hit this year, which tied the 1961 Twins for most grand slams in a season. Did you. Uh, Tony Oliva hit. <laughs> hit a slam or two uh -huh, that year. Maybe. Killebrew. A great history of baseball in the Twin Cities. That's where our man uh, Tavis Strand's from. Grew up in Minneapolis. I just remember my. My all time favorite hitting instructors, Rod Carew, playing for the Twins. I would think it, if, if Rod Carew is either your hitting coach or conducting a little forum on hitting, you're going to be all ears. Strike three. Larnick knew it. Good pitch by Bird. Couple left to board. We'll stretch at Coors Field for the final time in 2023. One run ball game. The 2023 season underway. You're gonna sell all that you had before you. To deep left field by Montero. This will get out. You don't need a bill. What a play by the 37 year old.
2-2 to Diaz. He's hit in the air to deep left field. Back it goes. Elias Diaz puts the National League in front. A fitting way to end his return. Job well done, Ryan Felton. This ball high and deep right field. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. Nolan Jones has won it. And off of that, we go to our drive of the game, brought to you by Nissan. Nolan Jones, apropos. Fourth inning to deep, deep, deep right center field, his 20th of the year. Well, what a fantastic rookie year for Nolan. He got his feet wet at the big league level last year as a Cleveland Guardian. Less than 100 at bats last year. And he started the year in Albuquerque, did not have, admittedly, a, a great spring training with the Rockies. And he tore it up in Albuquerque. He earned his trip to the big leagues to stay by what he did. And he is going to be a strong candidate for Rookie of the Year in the National League. He'll get a lot of votes. Tovar should get a lot of votes as well. And here he is in the seventh inning, an opportunity to maybe tie it up with another one swing of the bat, right? Guys that have hit 20 home runs in their rookie year, the Baby Bulls, number one, Trevor Story with that unbelievable 2016, Helton, Tulo, and now Nolan Jones. And right behind him, Nolan's very good friend, Ezekiel Tovar, with 15 in Toby's rookie year. We also got to throw in the outfield assists too. He's got 18 of those and the last rookie with more outfield assists than Nolan Jones. You got to go back to 1998 in Florida with Mark Kotze. Manager of the Oakland A's currently. Well you know it goes back a ways when, you, when you're talking about Florida instead of Miami. 927 OPS since late May when he came up for Jones three and two. Do you know who that's higher than? Let me give you the quick list. Okay. Bryce Harper, Cody Bellinger, who's had a phenomenal year with the Cubs, right? Yeah. Osuna and Riley with Atlanta. Cattell Marte with Arizona. Jorge Soler with the aforementioned Marlins. Higher than Luis Arise. Ooh. That's the kind of year that Nolan Jones has had. 3 2. Goes down here. As if it's been a special day for Bailey Ober. For Ober, that's his eighth strikeout. One out in the seventh inning. Chris Bryant coming up in this one run game. And we'll check in again with Kelsey. Yeah, thanks, Drew. The lowdown today is brought to you by Corwin Toyota of Boulder. Family driven for over 100 years. Years. So we continue to celebrate 30 years of Rockies baseball. We all know what happened October 1st of 2007 when the Rockies clinched the NL wild card after beating the Padres 9 to 8. Matt Holliday scoring on that dramatic sack fly as Ryan Spielberg walks back into the camera roll. He was a part of that game as well. 13 innings of game 163 here at Coors Field. Just the seventh one game playoff in MLB history. As we know, Spilly, the Rockies would go on to the World Series in 2007. What do you remember about game 163, Spilly? It was a long time ago. Great analysis. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. Now Major League Baseball has the you know, there's not going to be a playoff like that the way Major League Baseball has done it. it it's just all you know, who's beaten who and who has the, the tiebreaker. I, can't, I, I Well two things first off I love that we had game 163 so we could have for October. I also love the new schedule and the tiebreakers and, and the fact that we're watching you know the Rangers and we're watching the Rangers <laughs> and uh, and Texas and, and Houston kind of battle out for a division on the last day and knowing that you know games in the season count run differentials count all those different aspects of, of the of what you accumulate over the course of the year is worth something. For Bailey Ober he's 
just finding his spot today, but that will be it after 96 pitches. He was outstanding, cannot deny that. Nine strikeouts. Rocky will join Commissioner Clint Hurdle at Rockies Fantasy Camp November 5th through the 10th. Camp includes transportation, lodging, personalized uniforms, tournament play, and more. Spaces are filling up fast, so call 303-312-CAMP or go to rockies.com slash fantasy camp for more information. Brock Stewart, and his first pitch goes to the backstop. 1-0 on Ryan McMahon. Two outs in the seventh, 2-1 to one Minnesota. Ground out and a strikeout this afternoon for McMahon. Stewart pitched Friday night, two thirds of an inning, three hits given up, one strikeout on 25 pitches. Back next weekend, he's going to get to see, uh, we won't get to see his little brother TJ play. TJ's now, he's still rehabbing, he's now at Marshall. Marshall's going to be at NC State next week. 2 0, 3 0. It's you that strike two and one. Two balls, two strikes on Mac. It always feels like the last day of school, the last game of the season. You know, you kind of tease you. It's cardboard boxes ready with their stuff. Cars getting shipped home. We'll go. And you can pick your own friends. Yeah, we'll go to the eighth inning. Two to one, Minnesota.
by Southwest Airlines, Big Heart, and Low Fares. Book now at southwest.com. By Law Tigers, injured in a motorcycle accident. Call Law Tigers, Rocky Mountains Motorcycle Lawyers. And by Corwin Toyota of Boulder, family driven for over 100 years. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's, that's how they fix that's, things. That, <laughs> those are the EICs, engineers in charge of the truck. They, they only have one tool. Travis and Troy just destroyed stuff. <laughs> one tool, that's all it's needed, a sledgehammer. That's how I do it at home. That's why I was so wondering, you know, I, I so could never I, get a new monitor. You know who we forgot to <laughs> give shout outs to? Right. We forgot to give shout outs to our to our audio guys, Jeff Yulberg, Yuli back there, Rotolo, the hairiest guy on the on in our staff. We call him Motorola. Mickety. John Mickety's up with us every day. Mickety is a terrific singer. He's and I we were talking about this the other day. Next year we gotta get Mickety to sing the national anthem. Yeah. That'd be great. Be good. I don't know where he's gonna go. I mean, he's performed all over, over overseas. Well, he's in Mexico it, quite a bit. Yes. This ball's wide oh. left. It's gonna run to the wall for Ryan Jeffers, and Jones is gonna try Throw to make out. it close. Out at second base, Nolan Jones. Wow. They're not even going to review it, nor should they. What's there to review? I know. I'm sure oh. Jeffers is going, oh, man, I got a nice double here. Time out. Yeah, nice little throw in. We, we know about the arm strength. We know everything's over 100 miles an hour, right? But, Spilly, you it's played the out there. The accuracy is ridiculous. That's the best part. I mean, and don't forget, he was a third baseman. He didn't start playing left field till this year, and he did it at the big league level. I mean, that's the part that it, I was also a little bit sad. I mean, he walked by on his way out and congratulated him on 20. He was, you know, one more hit away, maybe sneaking at 299.97, maybe get to 300. We got to get him. All right, that's not going to happen, unfortunately, but let's get him another assist somehow. A 2020 homer assist rookie year. Eight up. I will point out one thing Edward when it comes Julian. to uh, some of the defensive numbers that probably won't show up in future years for Nolan Jones is the amount of would be base runners trying to move up 90 feet he'll that aren't going to take take that shot. Spilly, you know this, and this is the highest compliment. It's just picking up on what you're talking about. He'll never he'll never get to 19 assists again. No, and the last Guys player won't come close to running on him. Yeah, so the last player with 19 assists in less than 100 games. Good old Chick Hafey. Why haven't we worked Chick in more frequently, Doug? Doug was so ecstatic to give me this. Played for the cards. He's a Hall of Famer, too. Doug could barely contain himself when he handed me the note. Chick Hafey. In 1927. Old chick. Looked up some of the old video on, on chick. Big arm. I'm surprised they just kept running on him. I bet you chick was, what, 5'6", 133 pounds? He's <laughs> <laughs> a left fielder. He probably hit, like, 215. What year was it, like 1894? No, it's 1927. Okay, well, I can't talk to him. That's a strike. One and two <laughs> on Willie Castro. He definitely wasn't hey, six oh. foot four. No, he was six foot, 185 pounds, according to baseball. Okay, so, he, so he's pretty big. He was a pretty, pretty yeah. big dude back hey, then. Hey, don't, don't, make, don't make Nolan Jones six four. Nolan Jones is six five. You know, Nolan Jones, what can he do, huh? Close to 2020, because because <laughs> so if you include his tw his uh, 19 stolen bases. So speaking of 2020. Yeah. So he's also the first player to regularly wear glasses. Good old chick. Chick. 
To me, Doug, it, where do you come up with this? I, I have no idea. I, I thought Nicks. I heard a story I, about Chick the other day, and he ended up. I, I was like, so he couldn't hit. I actually think he he won a batting title. Is Doug waving his head? Yes. I'm gonna have to look him up now. Castro on for his third time. And Doug's writing another furious note. I think he's like, he won a batting title in 31. Bat at 349. Yes, he had yeah. told you. First dude Look with glasses and wins a batting title. That smile says it all. Big A, listen, we do this every year, and um, he's one of our buddies. He's been with us forever. He and I go back. I don't even know how far we go back. Football, basketball, Nuggets, but but Doug Marino's the best. Doug Doug works for us on a daily basis, but Dougie also works nationally. He, um, he chopped his hair off earlier this year. We didn't know who he was for like a week and a half. Thought he was an uh, accountant. You're the best, brother. Yes. Yep. Absolute the best. best. And and, it, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, we have a blast up here. Sammy, John Mickety behind us. We said we're going to get to sing the anthem. Multi-talented group, but but a great group. And, and and at the end of the day, all these names and faces that you're hearing us talk about, and Spilly making his way around the ballpark, um, it, it, it's about relationships, right? And it it truly is um, a wonderfully talented group, but more importantly, a group of really good folks. Alex Kirilov takes a strike. Now it's not Kirilov. That's Kristen Vasquez, who's been at first base. Game 162, right? You're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, kind of today. What'd you end up doing with your book? Uh, my book? I, I, well, Huey carries with him because Huey. So you whited out your the entire five, book? The, the, oh. the, what the five P's, prior preparation, right. prevents so poor it. performance. So I, I steal Huey's gadget there. The what out? My, so, okay. And I go across, and and so truth be told, Spilly came in, or Huey came in the booth again after grabbing a bite, and it was about a quarter of one, which in our business that's really late. We're getting ready to do the open, and and your lineups have long been in your book, and your notes are long down. I had it in at 10 o'clock this morning. Right, and, and, and I said, hey, I got bad news for you, dude. And I said, what? I said. Your lineup in your book is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. I said, because I just had to change everything. And it's usually like, oh, is it one or two? No, seven spots. All right, good pitch by Lawrence to uh, get the strike out. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. How about that throw by Nolan Jones? Beautiful. One run game.
Last chance when the Rockies score seven. Hopefully they break out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. When they score seven in a ball game, go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the following day between four and six to get your Rockies taco special lip moss at Taco Bell. There's Mickey. We were talking about Mickey. I don't know what he's doing behind the camera. He doesn't have to run a camera. There's Motorola, Mike Rotolo. <laughs> Yeah, Mike doing what he normally does. Uh -huh. Let your hair down, bro. Let yeah. your hair down. <laughs> is, is Motorola going oh. overseas coming up? That's ball one on Ellery's Montero and the new pitcher is Jorge Alcala. Yeah, he was just uh, reinstated from the 60 day IL today. Dallas Keiko was placed on the injured list. We saw the veteran yesterday in the game. Good swing by Montero. One ball, one strike. Rockies have two hits today. You got a homer and a bunt. A homer and a bunt single. Doyle the bunt single, the homer from Nolan Jones back in the fourth. Bailey Ober, who threw five shutout innings in his last start against Oakland, a win. Goes six and two thirds of one run baseball, two hits. So over his last 11 and two thirds, he allowed only four hits. Yeah, no walks, nine strikeouts. And he had no walks. And several strikeouts against Oakland. First outing against the Rockies. Three and two on Montero. One thing, and, and Buddy talked about this earlier, and, and this is an absolute accurate thought on the Rockies this year, despite the Hundred plus losses. This team, especially with this young group, the second half, they played with a lot of energy day in and day out. And I guarantee, and I think, you know, Kelsey's right down there. Spilly's been moving around, but you know, they they're you know, a couple feet from the dugout. Right now, in, in in the eighth inning of Game 162, and everybody excited, I'm sure, about seeing their families and, and moving out of town and kind of catching their breath. They want to win this game, and that's. That's been a consistent theme for this young group, and they show up every day. That's a strike on Ezekiel Tovar. Kels? You know, Bud spoke to exactly that point last night. It's obviously been a rough season for the Rockies, but these guys, no matter how bad the loss was the night before or a good win, they come in the next day with the exact same demeanor. And it, it, you guys know this. The chemistry that the Rockies have in, in this clubhouse is very rare. They all get along very well. It's really good vibes in there no matter what, like I said, happened the night before. And they come to play every single game. These guys don't care that it's game 162. They don't care that they're not playing in the postseason. They want to win, just like you said today. They're passionate, and they, they just want to be here. It's been really cool to cover this group of guys. It's a very unique and special dynamic in that clubhouse. Well, and, and two factors for me. The guy that uh, is the leader down in that dugout in Bud Black, that's his demeanor too. So he kind of sets the tone. But then the other guy, Charlie. You know, Charlie coming to work every single day. And so those two guys allow the rest of the guys to not get down. They understand this is what we have to do and this is the way we approach it each and every day. Three and two on Tobar. Sean Bouchard's going to hit for Austin wins. Red hot Sean Bouchard. Well, yeah, how Mr. about Mr. Longball he, uh, Spilly well, Bouch Sean Bouchard. Bouchard pretty impressive because last season we saw the numbers almost hit 300 had a 450 on base percentage. He had a OPS in the 900s after 100 of bats and then this year not so much. But that little stretch that he's gone on his numbers are almost identical to a year prior. 
So he's got to feel good about what he's been able to accomplish the last week. Yeah, 100 percent. So far, swings miss. That's five straight strikeouts between Bailey Ober, Brock Stewart, and Jorge Alcala. Well, the highlights for Sean. You know, started with the home run the other night. And followed up again with another home run, throwing a couple doubles, some three home runs out over the last four ball games. Even coming off the bench has provided some of that pop too. Outside ball one on Bouchard. There are a couple guys that are going to winter ball. I think I think Sean might be in that category, which I think would be so good for him. Get that a hundred. He he is he is definitely spilly. I talk to him about it. It's and great. Bam Bam as well. It's great. I mean that's so important for a young player, especially if you've missed out on so many at bats. To get those those at bats, try some things, lock in your swing, and for Sean, I bet you he'll have the best spring training he's ever had. There are a number of guys, Michael Tolia, who you know was up and down, and obviously didn't finish the season with the with the big club. But Michael's going to go out. Zach Veen, remember, had surgery. Zach Veen, yeah, is going to go play winter ball. Trejo is going to play winter ball. Yep, Trejo is. Brent Doyle, who's on deck, may or may not, but he is going to spend once he you know catches his breath a little bit. He's going to spend a lot of time with Bam Bam either in Curacao working with Bam Bam at Bam Bam's facility there or in Virginia Brenton's off season uh, home. Well if they need somebody else to tag along <laughs> just to make sure the work's going well I'll go to Curacao. <laughs> and I would not want you to go alone. <laughs> OK so <laughs> I got to have your back. OK <laughs> so we got to plan it out. Uh huh. Oh boy, high and deep left field. <laughs> Bouchard has done it again. Adios. Sean Bouchard has tied this baseball game off the bench in the eighth inning. What an extraordinary finish of the season for Bouchard. Now four home runs, seven RBIs. It just 38 at bats. Oh man, that's rattlesnake quick. Up and in is the hardest one to get your fastball and get on top of it. You gotta love it for him. I mean, notice how his legs, early on, he wasn't getting his legs completely underneath him, so the bat head wasn't coming all the way through. And I've always said about Bouchard's swing from the side, it reminds me so much of Nolan. Just where his hands are at, the way his, his barrel releases. There, there, he has a special bat. You just wanted to see it play out through the season. So check out the legs underneath him. He's loaded up, backside comes through, and you can just see parts of, of Nolan. And you know what Nolan was capable of doing. That was the first pinch hit home run of the year for the Rockies. How about this, Spilly? You get hot and, and hit some balls over the wall. I don't know if you ever did this. That's his fourth homer in his last 14 at bats. Come on. Crazy stuff. One two on Doyle, and Brenton swings and misses. Whole new ball game. Sean Bouchard off the bench into the scorebook. Demolished it. Two two going to the ninth.
Sean Bouchard has tied it up with a home run as we go to the top of the ninth in the final day of the regular season. Game 162, 2 2. Now, there has been so much written since spring training about the RSN situation, regional sports network situation throughout baseball, and it has affected so many different markets, Denver included, and specifically our home, the Rockies uh, broadcast for the last several years on AT&T Sportsnet, which will cease to be no more uh, at the conclusion of this season. And as uh, Tyler Kinley gets ready to go, we want to thank everyone for tuning in to watch us this year and over the years, going all the way back to various entities since 1993. And just like it has been every season since 1993, Rockies baseball, rest assured, will be televised in 2024. So stay tuned this offseason for a future announcement of the new home for Rockies broadcasts next year. And again, before you know it, opening day will be here. And uh, naturally, we all hope to be a big part of uh, your Rockies baseball in 2024. So just stay tuned. It'll uh, all sort itself out. One out. Well, on that note, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do and get as much access without the connection we get with uh, with the Rockies and, and communications. Corey Little, Shelby Cravens, Robert Livingston, Kevin Collins, Nora Farrell. I mean, uh, Farrell. I mean, we we have so many great people in the front office with the Rockies that help us out day in day out. Our stats, our notes. It, it really has been a great partnership for us as broadcasters working with the team. It is a tremendous partnership and you know professional sports this is lined to right. Charlie's gonna have to field it on a hop. So it's a base hit for Solano with one out. And it's been that way again since 1993 and many of us shall be on the right many of us um, you know have been around since you guys were playing obviously still you played well after Huey's career um, was done but the relationship between television and the Rockies organization and their PR staff has always been tremendous and, and we appreciate all that they do every day to to assist us in bringing you the broadcast it's going to go foul not only are they the best in the business they're, they're great human beings and, and so when we have that partnership we have that ability with Corey Little leading that department to heritage high schools yes. are on and University of Colorado That's Buffalo right and just a, a baseball guy and, and so Corey gets it but now you, you guys are right and this this is my 18th year doing this and it's just a privilege and an honor to sit in this chair each and every night along with the rest of our crew to to bring you Rockies baseball. Well, that's a strike 0 and 2 on loop low. And you also got have to give a shout out to the Rockies clubhouse personnel the staff Mike Ponerelli Ponerelli tiny Ponte, he goes by Ponerelli <laughs> Patrick Gill Tyler Hines the chef. Paul Egan's yes yeah. who is sweating Paul out that Georgia Egan's. game yesterday <laughs> I talked to uh, Eags for a while this morning he had to be sequestered to watch his Bulldogs but he pointed out I mean he's from that part of the world great rivalry between Georgia and Auburn and um, Georgia wins at Auburn the last three number one teams to go into uh, Jordan Hare come out losers so, so he's okay he said it's not easy but Eags is he's Eags is tremendous. Um, he's been the traveling secretary for a long time. He's been a, a Rocky since before they played their first game. Brent Doyle in center field. And also, I'd be remiss. There's Eags. Simply the best. First work for the Atlanta Braves and one Henry Aaron. Well, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't thank um, all of my uh, brethren, and I mean family, truly family members, Huey, Spilly, gotten to know Kelsey the last couple of years. She's awesome. Jenny, Mark Stout, Sully, you guys are the best, and, and we 
We spend more time together for seven months than you actually do <laughs> yes. truly with your family. And uh, I love all you guys. And um, I know sometimes this is kind of getting syrupy for everybody trying to watch a ball game at home. Uh, but you all mean I can't even put into words what uh, what you all mean to me. So thank you. Right back at you. You're all right yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't owe me anything because I because I, I, I try to beat you up unmercifully yeah. for six months, but you know what I think of you. Yeah. Likewise. Kyle Farmer with two outs. Hey, on a baseball note, how about how about Tyler Kenley? Another elbow surgery for Kinley. He comes back in the second half. And here in the waning days of the season, he's blowing 99. He's throwing harder, harder than, than, than anybody yes. else has thrown a baseball this year for the Rockies. Touch 100 right here. Oh. Right, through that disappearing slider. Good inning for Tyler Kinley. So we'll go to the bottom of the night. How about a walk off in 162? How about Charlie hitting one out? Maybe B Rod or Golden Jones. Have you ever thought of hitting a golf ball inside Coors Field? Here's your chance with once-in-a-lifetime golf experience with Upper Deck Golf. That's October 13th through the 15th. For more information, go to rockies.com slash golf. That was a fast read. You had to be fast well, I because was, uh, Charlie's I was, Charlie already might in the box. hit homer. That's right. 2-2, two -two, bottom of the ninth, game 162. Wouldn't it be fitting if uh, Charlie went deep here? He serves this ball to left field and it's caught out there by Willie Castro. Uh, I wanted to make one more note about Charlie. So Sean Bouchard is the reason we're tied at two. He came off the bench, pinch hit, two out, home run last inning, right? Yeah. That's the first pinch hit home run of the season for the Rockies. It'll in all likelihood be their only one, right? Once and the last guy to hit a pinch hit home run, Oracle Park last June, Charlie Blackman. That's when he pulled down the right field line. June the 7th in San Francisco. 0 and 1 on Brendan Rodgers. Brendan 0 for 3. Rockies have only three hits, two homers. Nolan Jones, who stands on deck. Bouchard's, obviously. And there was a bunt single by Brenton Doyle in the sixth inning. Once again, a crowd of 33,375. And normally, 
in September there's a lot of games where we feel like you know falls already arrived and you're bundled up. And it's, been short, it's been short sleeve weather all September. And Cal has got some nasty stuff. He strikes out Rogers. Two gone. And here comes Nolan Jones. Well, either a hard slider, that, that's what it is. He's getting some right handed batters to reach for it. Okay, so Nolan hit that home run to get him to 20. He's sitting at 297. He gets a base hit here. Let's say it's his last one that he'll end up at 299. 299. <laughs> But that's okay. It could be an exclamation point for the season for him. Somehow the game drags on. He gets a couple hits and it'd be over 300. That's not. Huey, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I'm just. I'm trying to get him to 300. To my point. That's okay. I'm fine with 21 homers. Two and zero. Oh. Nolan back in June wasn't a homer. It was a homer. Was it a homer, Dougie? It was a homer. He had the walk-off homer in June against the Padres. That's right. Three and zero. Oh. Well, if he does get on, he'll steal second base for Chris Bryant. He's going to walk off from Bryant with a single. To right. He needs. Hey, in the in the twenty theme, Spilly, he needs that. He yeah. need, he needs the stolen base for his twentieth stolen base. We do know, though, whatever happens, he'll carry an 18 game on base streak into next year. And those do carry over. Here we go. Ball four to Nolan Jones. That great eye. He's the winning run. He'll go down to first. Chris Bryant will step up. And see if Jones takes off. Yeah, steal first pitch. Let's go. It's going to be a high leg kick, fastball away. Put on the Jets. Go. That would have been a good one to go on. Hindsight being perfect. Uh oh. Oh, he was laying in. Spilly, is there any particular reason why, in unison with Ron Gideon, I didn't hear a back from you? Because we all thought the same thing. He was about to get picked off. <laughs> <laughs> He's going. Oh, foul ball. <laughs> no, no <laughs> one looking, looking up at, uh, at Edward Julian said foul ball. Foul ball. Well, Julian's at first. Oh, he is now? Dude, your book is trash right trash. now. Trash. Who's at second? Is that, is that? Vasquez Vas is Christian Vasquez at second. Yes. What's going on? He's a catcher. I think he's Craig Biggio. Two and one. All right. Jones caught his breath. And he's going to go here. This is the pitch. Yeah, but unfortunately, as a hitter, you can't. Oh, I know. You can't. You take, can't. A, can't take a two unless he's running on the slider, which is good. Jones goes, and the throw to second. Yeah, yeah, get him. Swift tap. Let's go. Because you got a catcher playing second. What a creative slide. <laughs> Did the swim move Love on it. Him. Yeah. Is this a good throw behind the plate by Jeffers? He comes up right on the money basket. Says, I got you. I got. No, you don't. No, you don't. Beautiful. You know what he did? Never, he did, yeah, never he, tagged him. He never got All him. right, now here comes the single to right. Kelsey gets the interview, and we go home. 3 1 on Bryant, winning run at second. Ball four. So Chris will go to first, and Ryan McMahon will come up.
So Nolan Jones hit his 20th homer earlier in the game. He just stole his 20th base. And he had an assist earlier in the game, which was his 19th assist of the year. What a great slide out of second. Go back. And watch the creative slide. It's a swim move. So you you lay out and then you pull the left hand away. That's why I say, I'm there. I'm safe. And then you have to hook the left foot. But, but Vasquez never never tagged him. And then he's hanging on for dear life. So he becomes the first Rocky rookie to have a 2020 season. Never happened before. It's been 15 times it's happened in the history of the Rockies. Here we go, Ryan McMahon, and slowly hit to third. And we'll go extra innings in game 162. The Rockies two and the Twins two. Tenth inning. Matt Cook's going to throw the top of the tenth for the Rockies. Kyle Farmer, unless they pinch run, should be the runner at second base. Trevor Larnick is at the plate. Well, and 39th appearance for Matt. Matt started yesterday's game. One inning, one hit, but two punch outs, 13 pitches, 11 for strikes. First pitch misses, ball one. A lot of extra inning games for Minnesota this year. 12 and 7. It's their 20th extra inning game. That's a lot. At least they've won. Some unlike San Diego, who would they go? 0 and 12? They, they finally now won. They won one. One. Did they, they win finally, one yeah, finally? Last week. Okay. Rockies are 5 and 4 in extra innings. In fact, the Padres in extra innings today, <laughs> Huey, <laughs> lead the White Sox in Chicago okay. 1 0. <laughs> Swung on and missed. And, and, Huey. Yeah. If they win, okay. if they hold on, yeah. with this furious comeback, 
late in the season which fell short of making the playoffs the Padres will finish 82 and 80. It'll be over 500. Next strike three on Larnick. That first out is always huge when you're talking about extra innings. And you're the home team. Ryan Jeffers, two for four. Jeffers in the eighth singled and then was thrown out. I mean, he hit a ball, folks, if you missed it. Line drive down the left field line, about 20 feet from the line, but it goes all the way to the wall. He's a double every day of the week in every league in the world. And Nolan Jones picks it up off the warning track, fires a perfect one hopper to Brendan Rodgers, and guess who was out? Jeffers. Hey, at Coors Field, the big, one of the biggest outfields in baseball, too. What if he was able to throw another person out to get 20-20-20? Hey. <laughs> so did, did not only the has years that had, ever, but has that ever happened? I don't know. 20-20-20. I can't imagine that's ever happened before. I kind of want to see a base hit to left. Though. Especially in as few games as Jones is, has played. Again, for Nolan, today is his 106th game. And he's a guy next year who figures to play 150. Plus. Plus, maybe more, right? Two runs, nine hits, an error for Minnesota. Two runs, three hits, an error for the Rockies. To third, Matt, great pickup across his body. Oh, yeah. oh, first, what a brilliant play by McMahon. You won't see a better play by a third baseman. Well, first to reach this, get it, and then have the arm strength to throw all the way across. You're stumbling, everything's going, and telling you, you can't make this throw all the way across the diamond on the money. Kyle Freeland loves it. Most of his teammates love it. That was crazy good. Edward Juliet, two outs. Farmer now at third. One ball, one strike. Good pick up by Diaz. Elias behind the plate now. Austin Wins was pinch hit for in the eighth inning by Sean Bouchard, who tied the game with a home run, a two out home run. Ooh, a final. Seattle over Texas, one nothing, and Houston. They're going to the win. They're going to win the division. They're up eight one in the ninth down in Phoenix. Woo. So Texas gets the wild card. Popped up, shallow center. Doyle screaming in, settling underneath. What a job by Cook with a little help from. The Gold Glove caliber defense of Ryan McMahon. No run scored for the Twins.
Philadelphia will play Miami this week. That should be a, a heck of a series. Arizona will host, or excuse me, Milwaukee will host Arizona. Milwaukee's uh, a division winner. The Dodgers wait for the winner of that series. Atlanta up top awaits the uh, winner of Philadelphia and Miami. It'll be all National League East teams there. Baltimore awaits the winner of the series between Tampa and Texas. And Tampa is going to host there as the higher seed. Texas went from being the division winner to the five seed. Yeah, they have to go to Tampa. So the Rockies trying to win it here. The winning run is Ryan McMahon at second. Montero is at the plate. Cody Funderburk is on the mound. That's fun. We well, got the W on Friday night. So Minnesota knows they're going to host Toronto. And then Houston gets uh, gets rest. Uh, a bye. You get a bye along with the Orioles in the AL. Montero hit a fly ball to left against Funderburg on Friday. Trying to make the Rockies walk off winners here in the 10th in game 162. Two balls, two strikes. So one out and Tovar has a chance to be the hero. Well, he's been the hero a lot this year has Ezekiel. The fastball from Cody that booted the bat of Montero. Yeah, unfortunately you know, this is something the Rockies will look to improve greatly on next year. That's the 15th strikeout offensively for Colorado today. Tovar takes strike one. One other note on the playoffs. So the 12 teams that comprise the 2023 playoff field, six are from the top half of teams in payroll. In other words, 15, the top half of uh, in the payroll department, salaries for players are articulated more clearly. Six come from top half, six come from the bottom half. Love it. And the top three teams in salary are, are not participating are in the postseason. The Mets, the Yankees, the Padres. So it's not all about money. 0-2 on Tovar, and that's strike three. I will point out the shadows are, are a bit of a factor right now. It's so you can see the ball's white, and he goes in the dark, and, and so the guys just aren't picking up the spin quite as well. First at bat today for Diaz. Well, Elias, MVP of the All-Star Game. He might be in the MVP of Game 162. Go back to 2019, the last time the Rockies had an extra inning game on game 162 against Milwaukee that year. Went 12, went 12 innings. 2019? 2019. On the ground, middle of the diamond, diving stop, it's short for safe. McMahon stopped at third. So an infield hit for Diaz. And that will give Brenton Doyle an opportunity to drive home McMahon. Well, I thought Elias was going to be the home, uh, the hero. Instead, it was Kyle Farmer diving because off the bat, I didn't think he had a chance, but he got a good hop. That allowed him to lay out and catch us. The hop right here. And once you do that, then it's an easier try to get up and spin and throw. Elias <laughs> is just legging it out, legging it out. Going one on Doyle. Doyle a bunch.
one single in the sixth. One for three. Let's get one more Doyle rules. Two strikes. As Billy just said, four o'clock hour thereabouts. Tough to hit. Maybe he'll overthrow that curveball and walk it off that way. We'll go to an 11th inning tied at two. So we'll go to an 11th inning, still tied at two. Edward Julien is going to be the designated runner at second. Gavin Hollowell's now on the mound for the Rockies. And Willie Castro will lead things off for Minnesota in the 11th. 26 appearance for Gavin, pitched on Friday night. That's a strike one and two. Two two on Castro. Been on three times this afternoon. Single, a pair of walks. This is a tough play for Tovar because Castro can fly out by a quarter of a Ooh. step. Last two half innings for the Rockies defensively, you've seen some 
great plays here in game 162. You had Max, and now this one. And you can even see Tomar was moving to his left just based on the swing. So the Rockies bring the infield in. Christian Vasquez with one out. Vasquez last night at the infield in, he attacked early in that bat. The second pitch, he hit a, a, a ground ball right back up the middle. In the air, foul out of play. Misses at 96, two and one. Vasquez now draws a walk, which complicates things defensively a little bit. Yeah, but the only good thing you could take from that is for Vasquez, doesn't have good speed. Or good tagging skills at second base. Andrew Stevenson <laughs> will be the hitter. Be his third at bat today. Well, three different pitchers. miles an hour from Gavin. Well, you don't have to worry about tomorrow, right? No. Stevenson behind 0 and 2. <laughs> to third. Looked back as he needed to, obviously, Julianne. Then looked to second. Didn't feel like he had that play, so he got the out at first. Well, he, he didn't because of where Brendan Rodgers was positioned. But Brendan wasn't able to get over there. And that's not his fault. It was just positioning-wise. He just didn't, couldn't get there in time. And so he had to just say, oh, I'm going to take the out at first. Solano swings and misses. By the way, the Padres couldn't close out the White Sox in the 10th. They now lead 2 to 1 in the 11th. And that's in the air down the right field line, out of play. Game still going on, obviously, and Washington and Atlanta in Atlanta, 10 8 Washington in the ninth. Only three games left. Hey. Look out. Oh, oh, oh. Did they get somebody? Nope. Anybody's just looking around? Yep, we good.
Yeah, everybody's fine. Okay. Woo. Just gonna have to change their shorts. But other than that, they're good. 0-2. Oh. Wow. That's that's a shame. You were in great position. That slider got away from Hollowell. That'll load the bases for Luplo. Yeah, this miss by two and a half feet. <laughs> Solano's just starting, he's starting to crouch because he knows I can't get out of the way. Jordan Luplo, two outs, bases loaded. Tied at two in the 11th, swung on and missed. Luplo was trying to make it a four run game. Too. So right back to where we were a moment ago. <laughs> Stayed on the gas at 98 foul back. He might have been shy to throw that, that slider after hitting Solano. Popped up and into the second deck. He's got him. Gavin Hollowell puts up a zero. As the Twins lead the bases loaded in the 11th, Brent Doyle will be the runner at second as the Rockies will try to win it in the bottom of the 11th. So here we go at the bottom of the 11th and Brenton Doyle is the perfect guy to be running at second and the perfect guy on the mound for the Rockies is Jordan Luplo. So the Twins have said we're not using any more pitchers yeah. here at game 162. We're getting ready for the postseason. So Charlie Blackman can win it. And the first pitch is in there for a strike.
Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh. This has popped up. Larnick coming on to make the catch. So one out, Brendan Rodgers up. Come on. End this game already. Brenton steal third. He is. And here comes here Doyle with a play that the Rockies win. <laughs> it's a 3-2 final in game 162. As Brenton Doyle gets his 22nd steal, and then on the wild pitch, he continues home. So a little crazy. And the Rockies are 3 2 winners in game 162. Luke Lowe <laughs> will get the loss as it goes five hole on well, Ryan then, Jeffers. Yeah, and then Luke Lowe forgot to cover home. They go, I guess I got to get there, but it's too late. Uh, maybe before they get on the play, PFPs for uh, Jordan Luke Lowe. Game time of 307 in game 162. And the Rockies uh, can smile a little bit, take a break, and get ready for 2024. Be a lot of young players. There'll be some guys that uh, also hope to make the jump from the minor leagues next spring training as the Rockies uh, look to build and start heading north. In terms of uh, where they are right now in wins and losses, but it was a, a good final game of the season, and uh, what a day for Nolan Jones! What a day for Brent Doyle, Kelsey! What a day for the young guys and Brent and Doyle for you! What a beautiful way for this season for that game ends with you with the speed on the bases, unique situation there. Walk me through what you're trying to do in there. I'm on. Yeah, very unique situation. Uh, you know, I was anticipating being aggressive on the bases, trying to make something happen, and that's what happened. Hey, all of these fans here today that have been here for you guys all season long, if you could say anything to them right now, what would it be? Thank you for all your energy, man. This is amazing, uh, and we'll see you next season. Brenton, congratulations on the win. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Guys, we'll get it back up to you in center field. Kelsey Brenton, thanks so much. What an ending. Brenton Doyle's speed on the base path paying off finally. <laughs> Pretty special day for Nolan Jones as well, getting into the 2020 club. Uh, we'll talk to some of the guys and Bud Black coming up after the break. Fan appreciation post game show next.